A beautiful afternoon in the capital city of Des Moines. It's the seventh and final High V Classic as the 8 and 2 Iowa State Cyclones meet up with the 6 and 1 Drake Bulldogs. Welcome to Wells Fargo Arena along with the 2008 Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year, Adam Emmenecker. I'm Brent Bloom. And Adam, this Drake team had to overhaul its roster in a matter of weeks. And first year head coach, Darren DeVries, has done a wonderful job. Yeah, I mean, to bring in that many new guys, they had to get 10 new guys in in just a few short weeks once he takes over the job. And to be 6 and 1, I think Drake fans are pleasantly surprised with the progress they've seen with this Bulldog program. And the Bulldogs playing a very entertaining style. Of course, DeVries spent 20 years at Creighton under. Greg McDermott for the last several years, and they play an up-tempo style. Yeah, and that's what he wants. He gives his kids a lot of confidence. And, you know, Brent, I think that's one of the fun things that we're going to see this afternoon. Both these teams want to get up and down. The pace is going to be high, a lot of threes flying. It's going to be an exciting matchup. And Iowa State comes in at 8-2 and two without Lindell Wigginton again today. But the Cyclones have weathered some injuries. Solomon Young questionable today, may see him. But Iowa State's young players have really stepped up. Yeah, I mean, you were talking about Drake recreating their roster in the offseason. Steve Probst had to do it during the season this year. Guys with suspensions, guys hurt. But the freshmen, they keep stepping up. You got Halliburton, you got Horton Tucker. These guys stepping into bigger and bigger roles, and they're clicking on all cylinders. They've had a good start. Eight and two is a pretty good record for them so far. But some veterans leading the way for Iowa State, namely Mariel Shayok, a transfer from Virginia, leading the Big 12 and scoring at over 20 points per game. Yeah, and we're going to talk about a couple of transfers here, a lot between these two programs. But Shayok, I mean, this guy has been unbelievable. 20 points per game, leading the Big 12, as you mentioned. And if he played for Tony Bennett, you know he can get out and defend on that side. So he has been such a big get for Steve Prome in this team, and his, he's been the rock that's helped keep this team together. Well, Iowa State affectionately known as Transfer U over the years in the last decade. Drake has borrowed some of that blueprint, and they've got a really good guard in Nick Norton. And, and Nick Norton has been such a big component to this team. And it's not just his scoring, 15 points a game, five rebounds, six assists. But it's just his ball control. When the ball's in his hand, everybody has confidence. And you look at that state stat line, 18, 17, and 13 against North Dakota State. One of the best games in Drake history. Oh, yeah, and he's shooting 45% from three. He's going to have his, the ball in his hands a lot this evening. Iowa State and Drake meeting for the 175th time in this series history and the final time for the foreseeable future here at Wells Fargo Arena today. It's going to be an entertaining basketball game. Yeah, I can't wait. Should be a fun afternoon. The Bulldogs and the Cyclones coming up shortly on MC22. I'm Brent Bloom and Adam. We've seen both sides now. Iowa State got off to a quick nine-point nine lead early. Yep. Lake counters with a 13-0 run, and then Iowa State ends the half on a 9-0 run. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the style both these teams play. They play up and down, right? And, and because of that, you have spurtability, and both of these teams have shown that. We've seen people knocking down threes. We've seen Iowa State going inside, getting offensive rebounds, eight offensive rebounds in the first half. Overall, Brent, I think both coaches go into halftime pretty happy with the way their kids have played and feeling good about the second half. And each squad has had some moments, and let's take a look at some of those highlights. And this one has been up and down. We thought it'd be up tempo, and it certainly delivered. Yeah, and then early on, it was Horton Tucker for Iowa State. You mentioned starting with a nice little run. It was him getting going early, seven points, the pretty step back. And you're going to see more pretty from Horton Tucker later. And it was Jacobson doing work in the paint, the left-handed jump hook. He finished with the right hand, diving on the floor, getting offensive rebounds. And Brady Ellingson really spurring the Bulldog. Knocked down a three on the right side, knocked one down on the left. The seven-footer, Robbins, getting in on the act with the right hand. And watch this. Watch the little juke. Pretty going back to the left hand. Horton Tucker, the nice finish. And as we close the half, offensive rebounds really spurring Iowa State. And the big finish for the freshman, Halliburton, throwing it down with the right hand. And you look at the difference in this game, Iowa State. Points in the paint, rebound edge as well, and the second chance points have been a difference. Yeah, second chance points, 7-2 to two for Iowa State. Iowa State, 18 points in the paint for 12 for the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs, though, looking at 12 assists, only five turnovers in that first half. They started hitting their shots early, calmed down a little bit late from, the, from distance. Need to get back to kicking the ball inside, seeing if Nick McGlynn can get some easy ones. Yeah, getting McGlynn going, and also, I would assume, Ellingson stayed hot, and yep. somehow Nick Norton can catch fire. We saw that 
last time out against Milwaukee. He hit three threes in succession to really separate yeah. from the Panthers and getting Norton some shots. Yeah, well. and, and give a lot of credit to Nick Weiler Bab for his ability to defend on one end and create shots, five points, three assists. Even though you don't see him a lot, he's not a headline guy. He's doing all the dirty work and all those things. And, and a guy that averages 20 a game, we haven't seen much from. Only two points for Shayok in that first half, three rebounds, two assists, but only one of seven from the floor. Drake's doing a good job defensively on him. Yeah, for Iowa State, Horton Tucker with 11, Jacobson with 11. Another storyline for Iowa State, where is Cameron Lard? Yep. We have not seen the sophomore center for Iowa State. He is suited up. I'm curious if we'll see him in the second half. Yeah, I'm interested because he could be a difference maker in this game. I mean, you look at what Michael Jacobson's done on the inside, clearing space, getting second chance opportunities, diving on the floor, getting loose balls and going up and finishing. That's what Lard does really well. So it'll be interesting to see if we get any time from him in the second half. But luckily for Iowa State, those freshmen have contributed, including the big man yeah. and George Condit, who came in and Iowa State, I think, was trailing at the time, yeah. provided a nice spark on the defensive end and also changed the pace of this game. I thought, I thought his energy on the defensive side, getting a block, getting a defensive rebound, and then running the floor and even going to the other side and finishing. I thought Condit's energy on the defensive end helped stop a little bit of Drake's run and get Iowa State going to help close the half strong. So Iowa State leads it 36 to 32, but Drake, where they want to be, I would assume, within four and with their, their ability to shoot the ball right in this thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if you're Drake and you're playing in this game, what you're looking for, let's battle it out. Let's battle it out with the big program, Iowa State. Let's Let's just have a chance to win at the end. If Let's Coach DeBreeze the going into halftime, they're right there. He's happy with where his team sits. They just need to execute a little better. Yeah, Drake winners of five in a row, and they're in a good position, but Iowa State leads it 36 to 32. Iowa State trying to move to nine and two in the non-conference. It should be a classic second half in the final high B Classic here at Wells Fargo Arena. Back with more halftime after this. Jacobson's hit one three already this afternoon. Tally goes driving in, he's fouled by Wilkins. There's a couple of guys that are both from the Northwest Indiana area. And it's a good story for Drake, how they ended yep. up with a bunch of guys from Northwest Indiana, really Merrillville and Griffin as well. They went down to Florida Southwest College and then all got recruited to Drake. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I think that's what Coach DeVries needed. He needed to get guys in bunches, and he did. And, you know, the, the funny thing is, as we see Shayok getting on the board, knocking down that 15-footer, for Coach Darren DeVries, having all four guys come in and now three that are actually playing this year. The fourth one on the bench is Roman Penn, who has to sit out with, with transfer rules after his freshman season at Siena. But all these guys can really play, and that's great for a Bulldog program that had a pretty much an empty roster when DeVries took over. Iowa State up four. Weiler Babb with a good take, but cannot get the roll to go. A long three by Norton, Banks no. Jacobson dies on the floor and a jump ball call, possession arrow to Iowa State. And it looks like Nick Norton was getting a little itchy on that one. He wanted to put that thing up anytime he saw the opportunity. And again, the physicality of Jacobson, Michael Jacobson going after that basketball. Look, it looked like Sturtz had the early advantage. I thought right. maybe the officials would call a foul as he bumped into him. Just bigger, stronger fourth-year player, Jacobson, goes to get that one. Jacobson was at one point offered by Iowa State to play tight end. He decided to go the basketball route. Probably a safer decision, and Jacobson's made an impact today. Father, an orthopedic physician here in the area. And a travel called on Shayok as he slid the pivot foot. And we see Iowa State using that dribble weave action, trying to move the basketball around the perimeter. Everybody gets a touch. That's part of what makes them special, is their ability to share it, their willingness to share it, and just the, the ability to make individual athletic plays, both off the bounce and knocking down shots. Drake has not scored in three and a half minutes. And McGlynn's shot comes up empty. Yeah, maybe settling a little bit too much for the outside one. Had some early success. Horton Tucker. And the rebound to Norton for Drake. Under a minute to play. Drake has led by as many as five. Iowa State's largest lead has been nine. Sturtz. And a foul called on Shayok, and Shayok did not appreciate that foul call. His second. 
but no bonus territory yet for Drake. And a, a opportunity here, Brian, for us to bring up something I really like that the NCAA has done in recent years, and that's the shot clock reset. So there were about 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Rather than after a foul resetting it to 30, now it's only 20. What that does, it gets more possessions in the basketball game. We start to see a little bit more up and down. I like some of these little tweaks the NCAA has made over the last few years to try to speed the game up, less timeouts, less media timeouts, makes for a fun atmosphere. With this building, it's kind of a neutral site. Yep. See, Iowa State fans, they outnumber everybody at the moment, but you think that the Hawkeye fans and the UNI fans will start pulling for the white and blue. Yeah, I think that's really true, especially, you know, Northern Iowa and Drake tend to have a little pact about those kind of things, but <laughs> Iowa and Iowa State, if yeah. one of those schools is the opponent, their fans are going to be cheering for the Bulldogs in this case. Iowa fans would definitely be supportive, so, you know, if you're Steve Frome and, and your bunch, you got a couple of young players, right, guys? As you mentioned, Brent, haven't been in a lot of close games. This could be become a hostile environment here in a few minutes if Drake continues to play well. Of course, this site will host the NCAA tournament this year, and Drake is the whole school, so that means both Iowa State, Iowa, you and I as well could potentially play in Des Moines if it works out that way. Yeah, and really cool what Des Moines has been able to do, not being able to attract some big time type events like the NCAA tournament. Obviously went really well. A lot of blue bloods here last time. Right. And the not only have I heard that Drake handled it, or Drake, excuse me, Des Moines handled it really well, but I think the NCAA is looking to bring more and more events to Des Moines. Norton cutting over Lard tonight again. Cameron Lard is not going to have that in his paint today. And so now we've seen Lard a couple blocks, maybe a foul on one end, but an offensive rebound, making his presence felt in there. And he's doing a good job putting pressure on Nick McGlynn, not allowing Nick McGlynn to create space and catch the ball near the rim. He's forced him out near the three-point line more. And only three on the shot clock for Drake. And Lard has brought an attitude to the floor as well. McGlynn over Lard. Banks in! A two for McGlynn over the outstretched hand of Cameron Lard. Not sure that's exactly how Coach DeBreeze drew it up, but sometimes better to be lucky than good. Nick McGlynn with the bank. Again, they call it a two. It might be reviewed. Weiler bad to the rim. Misses. Lard tries to follow, but it's in the hands of Murphy for Drake. 